Hello everyone, Dismus here, bringing you an updated version of my Magicka Templar build. The previous setup I used still works fine as well, if you want to check it out I'll have a link on the description. That said, let's take a look at the changes. This build performs pretty much like it used to in the previous patch. It's melee focused and uses heavy armors for some insane tankiness. The weapons the build uses are still dual build and sword and board. So let's start with the dual build skills. Explosive charge. This ability received some changes in the Dark Brotherhood patch. It's no more reliable and bugs out a bit less, but it's a lot slower than it used to be, which can cause problems. Still, I think the gap closer is necessary for a melee damage dealer, so I've kept it on the bar. If you don't like the gap closer after the changes, you can try slotting Blazing Shield here, which will make tanking a lot easier. But you'll have trouble catching people who run away from you. Degeneration didn't receive any changes in Dark Brotherhood. It functions just like always, grants you major sorcery, thus increasing your damage and puts a small dot on the target. Vampire's Bane, new addition to the 12 bed bar. It replaces Blazing Spear here and I'll explain shortly why Blazing Spear is gone. The snare of Vampire's Bane is really helpful when trying to catch people and the initial damage isn't that bad either, so you can use it when you need to deal ranged DPS. Also it deals more damage when it's on dual wield bar than it did on the sword and board bar. Extended Ritual. This ability received a lot of changes in the patch. It has a new morph called Ritual of Retribution that replaced the uh, Purifying Ritual. Ritual of Retribution heals for more and deals some damage to enemies within the circle. The downside is that it only purges 2 debuffs rather than 5, and for that reason I've decided to change to Extended Ritual, which now also removes 5 debuffs on top of increasing the base duration of the effect. Both Ritual morphs now also sna snare opponents within the circle, so that helps you land your sweeps and keep opponents within melee range. Puncturing Sweep the main damaging ability of the build, that also keeps you alive and reveals cloaking night blades. It's a frontal cone, so it does require some aiming. If there is lag, you may have to account for that and predict where the opponent is moving in order to land all the sweeps. As ultimate, Ice Comet. Dawnbreaker of Smiting used to be a good choice as well, but it deals physical damage now, so the damage it deals isn't that impactful anymore. Ice Comet is a decent alternative, however, and there are some combos you can do with it. It also passively increases your magic and regen thanks to the mage skilled passives. You can also try Soul Assault here, it's a good ulti. On the Sword and Board bar, we have Channeled Focus, increases your mitigations, making you tankier. Also returns 120 magic every 0.5 seconds which equals to 480 magicka regen. Casting this spell always returns more magicka than it costs to cast it, so treat it like a magicka potion. In the Dark Brotherhood patch, they also made this ability snare any opponent who steps on it. Defensive stance. Passively makes blocking easier and counters other magicka builds very well with the reflect. It also works against some Stamina Nightblades, as their Relentless Focus proc will get reflected by it. Purifying Light adds some burst damage to the build, and an important source of healing. You'll want to keep this up as much as possible, as it really helps you survive incoming damage. Reverberating Bash. This is a new addition to the build, and serves as the main CC of the build. It also puts a healing debuff on the opponent, making it easier to pressure opponents and force them down to defensive. Since this is now the main CC of the build, Blazing Spear serves no real purpose, and that's why I'm no longer using it. With the changes to heavy armor, it's very easy to keep enough stamina to use this ability. Not only thanks to the constitution passive, returning a lot more resources now, but also thanks to rapid mending 
now causing your heavy attacks to return 50% more resources. So you can heavy attack once with sword and board or dual wield bar and you'll have recovered almost half your stamina pool. Make sure to always keep enough stamina to be able to CC break though. Honor to dead. Emergency heal of the build. Use it only when you have to and only when below 75% health. The ultimate on sword and board bar is empowering sweep. It makes it a lot easier to tank big groups of enemies and out heal their damage. It also deals some decent damage so you can use it for burst in some scenarios as well. Next we have the gear. So this portion of the build has gone through a complete overhaul for this patch. The gear I used in my previous build still works fine and even has some advantage over the new setup but I believe this to be a step in the right direction. Two pieces of Maluvet hasn't really changed, a classic for this build really helps you survive when outnumbered. For duels I would actually recommend using Scorias instead as survivability isn't as much of an issue there and Scoria will just help you secure more kills. Five pieces of Fasala Skyle. This set gives you some more health which is more important now than ever as there's a lot more burst damage in the game after Dark Brotherhood. The four piece increase your healing received. This means you don't really lose much survivability compared to other armor sets with more spell damage. The five piece is phenomenal against most enemies as you almost completely cut off their healing when combined with reverberating bash. Five pieces of transmutation, another new addition. This set is fantastic on a Magicka Templar. You get two Magicka Regen bonuses, which are just enough for this build. Some crit to help with damage and healing, and a five piece that gives you 20% more critical resistance whenever you get healed by your Ritual or Malubet proc. This five piece also activates whenever critical leads passive from the Lady Constellation procs, in other words, whenever someone greets you. So it's almost always up. I have a feeling that the last one might be a bug. At least I hope so. The 5 piece also applies to your allies. So if they get healed by your ritual, they gain that crit resistance. The effect used to last 2 seconds, but as of the Dark Brotherhood patch, it lasts for 20 seconds now. So you only need it on your sword and board off bar, because whenever you weapon swap, it'll almost automatically refresh the buff if you're standing in your ritual or if you get crit by someone. Lastly, two wheel power swords. Since you won't need the transmutation on both bars, it's good to get some more damage while you can. You can see my stats on the screen. The enchants this build uses are weapon and spell damage and magical restoration on dual wield bar and stamina restoration on sword and board bar. The weapon traits are sharpened on both weapons on dual wield bar as this provides the most damage in this patch because uh, Nerdhound got quite an earth in the patch. And I use defending on sword and board bar because it's the best trait. And it also got buffed in the patch. All armor should be with impenetrable trait. I have some that are not, but I'll replace them as soon as possible. This is because the build uses no damage shields and doesn't roll dodge much, so you're going to get crit by a lot of enemies and Reducing that crit damage to almost zero has a huge effect on survivability, much more so than any other trait. The enchants on armor are tri stat enchants because you need all three stats for a lot of things. I use the legendary food and the classic tripods, and the mundus I use with this build is apprentice. As for champion points, this is how I've spent them fairly standard for a heavy armor build, except for the points in Befall. The points in Befall actually increase the effect of Vasalas as well, which is what makes the passive very valuable for this build. 
the best race for this build is Breton and I went over the other options in my previous build video and nothing really has changed in that regard. So I think that covers pretty much everything. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below and as always, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.